15 prohibitions and strange things that only exist in Israel. Living by their own calendar, always wearing a hat, and hand delivering letters to God every day, the Jewish people in Israel spark endless curiosity with the outside world. From unexpected regulations to peculiar habits, Israel is where some of the world's smartest people live. So what is their life like? In today's video, we will explore 15 prohibitions and crazy things that exist only in this country. Let's step into the world of strange rules and unique experiences that can only be found in Israel. Number 15. The only Jewish country in the world. Let me tell you a fact, Israel is indeed the homeland of the world's smartest nation, the Jewish people. Israel is the only country where Jews make up the majority. The modern state of Israel was established as a Jewish state and defined its identity in the Declaration of Independence and the Basic Laws. The population of this country is 8,680,000, of which 6,484,000 are Jews, accounting for 74.4% of the total population. This is the only country where Jews are the majority. Among them, 75% were born in Israel and over half a second generation Israelis. Arabs make up 20.8% and other ethnic groups make up 4.4%. There are about 14.4 million Jews in the world. Thus, Jews in Israel account for 43% of the total Jewish population worldwide. That's why Israel is called the land of the Jews. And of course, in the land chosen by God, there are countless strange things waiting for us to explore. Number 14. Students only dream of joining the military. While students everywhere diligently study to get into Harvard, Princeton or Yale, the top universities in the world, 17-year-old students in Israel are training themselves to join pilot training courses, Sayarot. The Navy's Special Forces Unit, Paratroopers, Infantry Brigades, Elite Intelligence Unit 8200, Mamram Computer System Unit, the finest units of the Israel Defense Forces. Isn't that strange? However, this is not the only surprising thing in a small country that the world is using terms like phenomenon or miracle to describe. And you might be even more amazed to learn how superior Israel's higher education system is. As of now, Israel has eight universities and 27 colleges. Four of them are among the top 150 universities in the world, and seven are among the top 100 in Asia Pacific. None of these are satellite campuses of foreign universities, Israel currently has more engineers and scientists per capita, as well as more scientific papers per capita than any other country, 109 papers per 10,000 people. However, university education is not the number one choice for high school graduates in Israel. Because in Israel, sometimes a person's military history is more important than their academic background. One of the frequent questions in interviews is which unit you served in the military. The difference is also evident in the fact that while the military in other countries can only recruit volunteers, the Israeli military is allowed to select the best. Even in the United States, with prestigious military academies like West Point, they can only hope that the best will come to them. They do not have the ability to study the academic records of each high school student and invite the highest achievers to compete with the most talented peers like the Israel Defense Forces. Number 13. Prohibition before visiting the Dead Sea. Located on the border of Israel and Jordan, the Dead Sea is a destination that attracts many tourists for its therapeutic mineral-rich salt water. However, tourists can run into trouble if not careful when swimming here. The water of the Dead Sea has extremely high concentrations of salt and minerals, which can easily penetrate the skin through pores and epidermis. Therefore, before visiting the Dead Sea, you should not do anything that makes your skin sensitive, such as shaving, waxing, or removing hair, unless you want to experience extremely uncomfortable itching in the following days. When visiting the Dead Sea, a blogger from Places People Stories recounted that she felt a burning sensation on her skin as soon as she stepped into the water. This female tourist made the mistake of shaving her legs the night before. Small scratches on her body also stung when touching the seawater. Just after 10 minutes of soaking in the water, she had to come ashore because she couldn't bear the burning sensation all over her body. However, this blogger found that her calluses disappeared completely after bathing in the sea. 
Some people may enjoy the feeling of walking barefoot on the crystallized salt beach, however, small salt crystals can cut the soles of the feet. If you have sensitive skin, you should wear shoes, even when swimming in the sea. When here, you should also avoid splashing water or rubbing your eyes when swimming in the sea, as the water can cause irritation if it gets into your eyes. You should rinse off with fresh water after soaking in the Dead Sea to wash off the salt residue on your skin. Number 12. Remember to leave tips for the servers. I was shocked when I heard this information and I want you all to know about it. It's that restaurant and cafe servers in Israel, in general, do not have a salary and solely rely on tips from customers. So in Israel, tipping is almost mandatory in the service industry like restaurants, bars, hotels and similar services. Although there are no specific regulations regarding tipping, leaving around 10 to 15% of the total bill is a common practice. However, in some cases, the tip may be included in the total bill. If you're satisfied with the service, leaving a tip is a way to show your appreciation to the service. In some cases, the tip may be given directly to the staff, while in other cases, you may leave the tip in the tip jar at the checkout counter. Number 11. Dress modestly. I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but I have to remind you that Israel is a holy land for Judaism. Therefore, whether you're male or female, it's important to dress modestly and respectfully in public places, especially in churches or temples. In tourist areas, tourists can still dress comfortably but should avoid being too revealing. However, in sacred places, you should avoid wearing t-shirts or shorts above your knees. This is a simple but extremely important rule, not only in Israel but almost a principle in all Islamic countries worldwide. Dressing modestly shows the respect of the tourists for the history, religion and culture of the country they are visiting, as well as avoiding the uncomfortable gaze of others. Moreover, when visiting these places, you are not allowed to touch the Quran, take photos without permission, or walk in front of people praying. Number 10. Kashrut Law If you're invited to dine at an Israeli's home, be careful with every gesture during the meal to avoid upsetting the host. And one of the rules you must remember is the Kashrut Law. Kashrut is a set of religious laws governing the diet of Jews. Food that can be consumed according to Jewish law is called kosher, originating from the Ashkenazi pronunciation of the Hebrew word kasher, meaning fit or proper. Many laws prohibit the consumption of certain animals such as pork, shellfish, both soft and hard-bodied animals, along with most insects, with exceptions like four species of locusts called kosher locusts, and the kosher slaughter of poultry must adhere to a procedure called shichitita. There are also laws regarding agricultural products that may affect the suitability of food for consumption. Most of the basic laws of kashrut originate from the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy in the Torah. However, the details and practical application of them are determined in the form of oral laws and are recorded in detail in later rabbinical literature. While the Torah does not state the reasons for most kashrut laws, some opinions suggest they are simply tests of human obedience, but for non-believers, it's truly a huge hassle, and most of them end up making mistakes. Number 9. Sending letters to God. It's hard to believe, while we only know to pray to God, in Israel, people write prayers and send letters to God every day. This is entirely true, the service of sending letters to God has been implemented by the Israeli government for a long time. The fee for this service is very high, as postal workers say they need to deliver to God's land. In fact, God does not open each of their letters. The destination of these letters is the cracks in the wailing wall in the holy city of Jerusalem. I know the significance of this land to the Jewish people, but accepting this service is actually a not very smart move by the government. When the letters become too many, the walls have been drilled to accommodate more letters. Every time it rains, the letters are damaged by water, crumpled, and create great pressure for the cleanup crews in the holy area. Number 8. The Peculiar Hat of Jewish Men This might be a question on many people's minds, including mine. How can Jewish men wear such a small hat that doesn't fall off? It looks really peculiar, doesn't it? 
The small round hat worn by Jewish men is called a kippah, or also known as a yarmulk. According to Jewish teachings, the top of the head touches the sky. Therefore, this area should not be left uncovered but should be covered with a hat or a headscarf. This has become an important custom among Jewish people. Jewish people believe in monotheism and worship the god Jehovah. They believe that the top of the head is connected to the sky, should not be left exposed, and must be covered with fabric to show respect. This custom continues in their settled life afterward. Jewish men should pay attention to the stability of the hat when wearing the round hat. This originates from the tradition and belief of Judaism. For devout men, the round hat is an important symbol of respect for God. However, the round hat is small in size and made of soft material, so it is prone to slipping off the head or being blown away by the wind. To prevent the hat from falling off, Jewish people have invented various methods to secure it. The most common method to secure the hat is to use metal hair clips, usually long and thin clips to keep the hat tightly attached to the hair. Some people also apply a small amount of quick drying glue or other adhesives inside the hat to use adhesive force to fix the hat on the scalp. Although this method of fixing is strong, you may feel uncomfortable when taking off the hat. Some people also use chewing gum or paper to apply a layer to the inner side of the hat to increase friction with the scalp. However, this method is only applicable for a certain number of times. For bold men, you can use double-sided tape or other adhesive materials to stick the hat directly to the scalp. This can greatly enhance the stability of the hat, but you also need to pay attention to the number of times you use double-sided tape to avoid damaging the scalp. But with the advancement of science and technology, some more advanced methods of wearing small round hats have emerged, such as hats using magnets for attachment or integrating ultra-small fans into the hat to create suction force. These novel fixing methods provide a safer experience for bold men. Number 7. Avoiding talking about politics. We all know that Israel is a country facing political issues, so one thing you should never do when visiting this country is to discuss politics. Social norms and cultural regulations may set limits on discussing political issues in public places, in certain situations, to avoid conflicts or disturbances. Once again, I want to emphasize that this country is indeed very unstable, and if you express views contrary to the political opinions of the people in that area, you are inviting trouble upon yourself. All assumptions, rumors, and speculations about politics, culture, or religion can be offensive, provocative, and hinder the resolution of issues for the people in this country. Number six, bar bat mitzvah ceremony. In our society, children are considered adults after turning 18, but in Jewish society, they are considered adults only after participating in a ceremony called Bar Bat Mitzvah. According to Jewish law, boys undergo the rite of passage into adulthood at the age of 13, while girls do so at the age of 12. According to Jewish law, at this age, Jewish boys and girls become adults and are responsible for their actions. Before this age, parents are responsible for their children's actions, but after reaching this age, boys and girls take responsibility for Jewish laws, traditions, and ethics. They can participate in all areas of Jewish community life. According to tradition, the father thanks God for not being punished for the child's sins. In addition, boys who undergo this rite are considered eligible to pray and lead religious activities. The bar or bat mitzvah ceremony is usually held on the first Sabbath after a boy's 13th birthday and a girl's 12th birthday. According to tradition, it is believed that at 13 years old, the iron is on and the child rejects the idol worship of his father and begins to worship God. During the bar or bat mitzvah ceremony, the individual is required to read the Jewish scriptures and wear tefillin on the head and arm boxes containing the scriptures on the head and straps symbolizing the word of God on the arm. The family will celebrate with festivities, feasting with family, friends, and the community, and in some Jewish communities, boys and girls are given certificates of adulthood. In some other Jewish communities, the bar or bat mitzvah ceremony is called Bar Baraka in Aramaic, meaning son of blessing. To honor and recognize Jewish traditions, some Christians also organize bar or bat mitzvah ceremonies for their children with blessings for their offspring. 
This ceremony is truly fascinating, but recognizing children at the age of 13 or 12 as adults creates much instability in Jewish society, especially in terms of early marriage and childbearing. However, if you are present, respect what they are doing and refrain from expressing your opinions to avoid receiving unwelcoming glances. Number 5. Women carrying guns on the street. Perhaps the predominant impression among most Americans is that the United States is the country with the loosest gun control in the world, but people often overlook the rate of carrying guns in Israel. Almost everywhere in this country you can see Israelis with rifles slung over their shoulders strolling down the street, including many beautiful young women. In fact, the reason why these Israeli girls are carrying guns has its own reasons. These Israeli girls carrying guns are almost all women who are currently serving or have served in the regular Israeli military. According to Israeli Defense Force regulations, even during off-duty hours, all Israeli soldiers in active duty and in the reserves must always carry guns. This is the direct reason why Israeli girls have to carry rifles even when wearing bikinis. Carrying rifles has almost become the standard equipment for Israeli female soldiers. On social media, there are many photos of Israeli girls showing off themselves, one side with full weapons and the other in cool summer clothes. When looking at these pictures, some may not understand what kind of attire are these girls wearing. How can they be combat ready when taking such photos every day? We hope that relevant Israeli authorities will closely monitor them. In fact, it's completely the opposite. To attract more young women to join the military, the Israeli military encourages female soldiers to post the coolest photos on social media to show the good spirit of the Israeli Defense Force. To date, women account for about 34% of the total regular military and 57% of military officers. Up to 92% of positions in the military are open to Israeli women. This is unprecedented in the world, not found in any other country. Similarly, according to statistics from the Israeli National Defense Force, from 1,962 to 2016, 535 Israeli female soldiers have died in combat activities. Number 4. Hebrew Calendar Today, while most countries use the Gregorian calendar, Israel has decided to use their own calendar, the Hebrew Calendar. This is a calendar system mainly used to determine the religious holidays of the Jewish people. This calendar system determines the Jewish holidays such as Torah, Yahzites, daily psalm readings, and many other ritualistic applications. In Israel, this calendar system is the official calendar for civilian purposes and serves as time markers for agricultural purposes. Originally, the Hebrew calendar of the Jewish people was used for all daily life purposes, but after the conquest of Jerusalem by Pompey in 20 BCE, the Jewish people began to supplement it with the civil calendar. The Hebrew calendar has evolved over time. For example, the months were originally established based on the observation of a new crescent moon, with an additional month added every two or three years to keep Passover in the spring, again based on the observation of natural events, specifically the ripening of barley to the Aviv stage. Number 3. The only country attempting to revive an ancient language. For over 3,000 years, through the history of the Jewish people, the Hebrew language had once been in a deep slumber, but it was awakened in the land of Israel. The people of Israel mark Hebrew Language Day every year on the birthday of Eliezer ben Yehuda, the father of modern Hebrew. The revival of the Hebrew language is an extraordinary and unparalleled story in human history. A language with roots dating back 3,000 years, it was revived after centuries of dormancy, and now it thrives in the 21st century. 150 years ago, Hebrew was not a spoken language, and it wasn't the mother tongue of anyone. Today, over 9 million people speak Hebrew, and for most, it is their mother tongue. Throughout the millennia, when the Jewish people were scattered after the destruction of the Second Temple, Hebrew still lived on in religious rituals and ceremonies, and as a lingua franca of the Jewish diaspora. Written Hebrew continued to develop, becoming the language of poetry and communication among scholars who wrote books on law and philosophy in Hebrew. Each generation was encouraged to learn to read Hebrew to become acquainted with the original texts and traditional rituals of Judaism. 
But in those years, the Hebrew language was no longer a living language, lacking breath in everyday life, the secular life of individuals or the national life. Number 2. Yom Kippur Day If suddenly you find airports, public transportation activities, radio stations and televisions in Israel becoming quiet and the streets deserted, don't worry, there is no impending disaster. But the people of Israel are observing Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement of the Jewish Faith. According to tradition, these roads will give way to pedestrians or cyclists and non-motorized vehicles. Driving on the Day of Atonement is considered taboo. Many Israeli secular people have turned this day into a cycling festival, taking advantage of the car-free roads. For traditional and orthodox Jews, the 25-hour period of fasting and prayer begins at 5.40 p.m. in Jerusalem and 5.55 p.m. in Tel Aviv. Airports will only reopen in the evening of October 9th, with arrivals starting at 9.30 p.m., while departures will resume at 11.30 p.m. Border crossings also close shortly after noon and reopen at 10 p.m. on October 9th. Also on October 8th, at sunset, all domestic radio and television stations broadcast with gradually decreasing volume until silence. Public transportation also ceases operation for buses and trains en routes until the end of the next day. Only two trains operate on the night of October 9th, one from Naharia to Ben Gurion Airport and one from Beersheba to Tel Aviv. The remaining trains resume operation on the morning of October 10th. Roads will also be devoid of motor vehicles from the early evening of October 8th. The holiday will end at 6.51 p.m. and 6.53 p.m. on October 9th and then everything will return to normal. Number 1. The Western Wall For Jews around the world, the Western Wall in the Holy Land of Jerusalem is the holiest of destinations. The Western Wall was built by King Herod the Great in the early 1st century BCE on a portion of the Temple Mount constructed by King Solomon nearly 3,000 years ago. It is a sacred and important religious site of the Jewish people worldwide, located in the Holy Land of Jerusalem. Every year, millions of believers and pilgrims from all over the world come here to visit. Especially for the Jewish people from ancient times to the present, the Western Wall is highly revered because, for them, it is not only a historical monument but also a source of national pride. The Wall is called the Western Wall because it is where the Jewish people come to pray for the fate of their nation, which has always been invaded by other countries and has gone through constant wars. According to tradition, anyone with a wish can write it on a piece of paper and insert it into the crevices in the Western Wall. Then. Their wishes and prayers will be considered by God. The Jewish people have a tradition that no one is allowed to peek at the prayer notes of others because it will detract from the sanctity and effectiveness. When visiting here, tourists should choose modest attire, covering from shoulders to knees. If you are a man, you should prepare a kippah, a circular and flat hat of reverence for God. And don't forget to write your prayers on paper before stepping into this sacred place. Devotees believe that their earnest prayers will reach the ears of God and be answered. So we have explored 15 prohibitions and peculiarities unique to Israel. If you find the information we shared in this video intriguing, don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss out on other videos in the future.